so welcome everybody to uh, another Pinnacle on Friday. <clears throat> our uh, our numbers are are scarce. Uh, I I don't know this, but I suspect that the topic <clears throat> it's been asked, but I think it may have scared. So we're we're about a third of where we normally are. I think the topic may have scared some people off. I'm really interested personally in this. I I listen to the experts. I listen to Neil and I listen to Colette and and Lorraine and some of the other people who are real experts at uh, at, at dual eligibility and and they can answer questions about Medicaid for people who are not on Medicare. And so we've had a number of agents ask for this. And so I believe that Neil, um, so wave Neil, everybody, I think everybody knows Neil. Neil, who is our carrier rep, our generic term, he's our carrier rep or our account executive, or I'm not sure what the technical term is at <clears throat> Molina. He helps us and, and our agents with uh, our questions and, and, and our interface with, with Molina. And he has invited Jana Bradford, who is, and Jana, I'm just going to, thank you for waving. I'm just going to uh, make up what I think that you do which is uh, the way Neil positions her. She is an expert from Molina's perspective on Medicaid in the state of Utah. So we are mostly focusing on the state of Utah uh, here in this pinnacle. And uh, I believe uh, that Jan is going to be doing a presentation. Neil, do you want to say something before Jana starts? Or um, pretty much, I want to thank Jana uh, for you know taking the time. I, I had we met last week, I think, or the week before. One of these weeks, we met face to face, and it, it was just really nice to meet her and her team. Um, so she can really shed some light on some of the questions that were happening uh, la the last time we had this meeting. And and also, I want to thank all of you here. Um, you know, Stonehill, you, Doug. Nancy's always super awesome with me. Um, so I want to thank you guys too as well. It really means a lot that you ask us to present and to um, you know and to share what we know. So so thank you for for having us and and just that. That's all I would have. Thank you. Jana, take it away. All right, I'll do it. Well, Neil is way too kind. I don't know that expert would be be the word, but I am definitely a go-to. Um, if I don't have the answers to your question, um, I have provided some links within the presentation that I'm going to share, and I can send that out to the group after this meeting. Um, it has Medicaid everything. Um, so I will share that. Let me just pull up my, my screen. Bear with me one moment. Have you used Google Meet before? This is not our platform no so when you when you click that square with the up arrow with the bottom of the screen uh -huh. it will ask you to share either your full screen or a window or a tab so it depends on where your presentation is usually people go i can't get it to share you actually even if there's only one thing that you're sharing you still have to reach up into that window that opens up and click it and then say share, and then it works. Okay, we'll give it a shot. Um, and bear with me, thank you, that is helpful. No. Looks like I've got every window but the one I want, share. Okay, can you guys see my screen okay? Not yet, oh, there it goes, now it's opening. Hey, okay. and I love that it takes my face away so I won't get distracted on what I'm doing here with my hair and, and whatnot, so. So as, as mentioned, my name is Jana Bradford. I am the program manager of member and community engagement uh, for Molina Healthcare here in Utah. And what we do, what me and my team do is we go out into the community. We meet with community partners, organizations, providers. We really want to be in front of um, you know, lower income populations that could potentially qualify for Medicaid. Uh, Medicaid is the main focus on our team, although we do have, you know, the other services and products that we have information on our tables, but we do a lot of events. 
Um, last year, I think we did, there's a team of three that we have, and I think we did 320 events total between the three of us last year. So in Utah, um, Medicaid is a little tricky. We're not allowed to market in any way. Uh, we can't have Medicaid on any of our brochures. It can't say the word Medicaid. We can't have commercials. We can't really sell. We don't get to enroll people, uh, but we do work with um, some assister or navigator programs. These are people that specifically work with individuals to get them signed up for Medicaid or Marketplace, um, SNAP benefits, et cetera. So we refer all of those people to these, these organizations that can help them through the entire process from, from A to Z. Um, some of those would be Take Care Utah, Alliance Community Services, Holy Cross Ministries. Again, they have teams of people that specifically just sign people up for Medicaid. So we work hand in hand with them. Um, let me start this, I'm sorry. Slide. And you guys already met with Neil, I think within the last few weeks. So it kind of, I get to skip some of the presentation that I typically do. And again, this, this presentation is really geared towards our community partners. Um, so it, it may not have all the information for you guys, but that's why I'm so, here we can talk about it. Janet, let me, can yeah. I just, uh, this is Doug, can I just make sure, one of the questions that we've asked, and even though the agents who were asking this aren't here, um, they were asking for a better understanding of Medicaid, uh, the way the Medicaid program works for people who were not yet eligible for Medicare or who are not yet enrolled in Medicare. What's How does the program outside of the dual eligible product work? Well, essentially, um, it's based on income. Medicaid is for low income individuals. And so once you apply for Medicaid, if you are approved, you would then need to choose one of the four providers of Medicaid here in Utah. Uh, if you don't choose a plan, then you're auto assigned as we kind of heard before. Um, and then and then that's kind of how that works. It all goes through just that approval process through an enrollment based on your income. If you don't qualify for Medicaid based on your income, there's options for CHIP for, for children, um, and then it would go to a marketplace plan that you could be eligible for. Does that answer your question? Sort of. I, th I, I think that they're also looking for, you know, some, you've mentioned some of the things. The questions that these agents are getting is, how do I apply for Medicaid? Who do I talk to? What is it they're going to expect from me? They're, they're looking for the ability to be able to answer the questions of the process that they're not personally involved in. Okay. The best advice I could give is would be to go to the DWS website, Department of Workforce Services. Later in this presentation, I've got a bunch of links that will answer every Medicaid question you could possibly have. But again, we don't get to enroll people in Medicaid. So we work with, if somebody came up to my table that didn't have Medicaid yet and was interested into them or interested in, in applying for Medicaid, I would I would refer them to Take Care Utah or to Alliance or to one of these organizations that can help um, enroll people. And then what they do is literally walk that person through the steps of applying for Medicaid, right down to getting them set up into my case. So we don't get to do that at the health plan level. We would refer on to one of these. They're either called assisters or navigators. Could you um, use so, agents as well as sisters or navigators? Uh, I don't know that agents sign people up for Medicaid. Anybody, so okay. as, and okay. I think it was Colette that mentioned that she was, you know, she went on and, and became a third party, you know, person. So now she can go in and assist this person through whatever's happening within their my case, right? So yeah. you can, you can designate somebody to help you go through the process. However, applying for Medicaid can be very challenging. It's not super user friendly, right? And so um, I would, and I'll send this information. We have a, a flyer for Take Care Utah as well. And this is a statewide program. It's free. Anybody can contact them and they literally go through the entire process right down to helping them upload the forms, 
Um, they help them with the renewal process. So we would refer on to one of those agencies that would be able to help somebody. For general questions about Medicaid, they can always call. I would never refer somebody just to call Medicaid because I know that the waiting times are crazy. So going to Take Care Utah and having them assist, they're able to answer a lot of those questions about eligibility, whereas we don't get to, we're not involved in the eligibility process. So, but we do work hand in hand with Take Care Utah. And like I said, I will supply a flyer that has all of their information. It's so easy. Um, they even have like the, the QR code that somebody could scan on their phone that takes them directly to their um, scheduling page. So they can do it in person, they can do it over the phone, they could do FaceTime, but they set these appointments and then you meet with somebody that will help you get enrolled. That's not with Department of Workforce Services. And I love Department of Workforce Services, but I'm not gonna refer there because I know they are slammed and they are short staffed just like, like everybody. So with these assister and navigator programs, they receive grants, right? Um, and so some of the health plans, Molina, I know Select Health and the U, they give them grant money. So for this year, essentially, we're funding two full-time staff um, of, of navigators to help people with enrollment. So that is what I would do. I would refer Matt, them to one of those you, organizations. You mentioned that there were four carriers that had, uh, let's say, authorized uh, plan or plans. Molina, U of U, Select Health. Who was the fourth? Uh, health Choice. Okay. Okay. Yep. And health choice, that is also U of U, right? Ah, it sure is. Yes. They were bought out by the U, I think a year or a year and a half ago, maybe the last couple of years. Yes. But they are still technically separate entities, yet it is owned okay. by the U. Okay. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, one of the things I, I do notice here in the chat, Colette here, and by the way, Colette's had quite a bit of experience with uh, DSNPs. She did say that she did input an application for Medicaid through the, and I take it, the My Case portal yeah. uh, with that beneficiary that she was talking about. So I just thought I'd insert her comment. Yes, yes, you absolutely can um, do that. And, and I love that you were able to become a third party um, to be able to help with that because uh, like I said, it can be very challenging and overwhelming for people. And oftentimes people just are like, I don't want to deal with it. So they don't sign up. So um, products by coverage area here on this slide is basically a snippet of our different lines of business that we have. Our Medicaid and CHIP and then the areas in which we cover our marketplace, our Molina Medicare, uh, complete care and our Medicare choice care. I don't touch, I won't touch um, on the Medicare side since I know you guys kind of already went through this training, but if any questions arise as we go, just holler. So as mentioned before, there are four, um, four health plans that, that cover the state of Utah for Medicaid. As mentioned, it was Select Health, the U of U, Molina Healthcare and Health Choice. Um, fun fact, out of those four choices, Molina Healthcare is the only non-hospital owned system. So IHC obviously owns Select, the University of Utah owns um, U University Health, and then, <coughs> ex I'm sorry, et cetera. What sets us apart is since we are not hospital owned, we have been able to um, what, what is the word I'm looking for? Yeah. <laughs> we are contracted with all of the other health plans, right? So our, our provider network is kind of what sets us. It's the biggest thing that sets us apart. Um, so we are the university of Utah. We have their entire medical group and all of their facilities. Same with health choice. Um, the only one with Intermountain, we have a lot of their hospital system, but we don't have all of their, their PCPs. We have a large chunk of them, and that's a relationship that we're, we're constantly trying to grow. But so out of the four health plans, we have the largest network because we've been able to, you know, um, was there a question? Was somebody speaking? I'm sorry. Oh, I, I was, I was, I just wanted to ask. Are you supposed to be on, are you still on that same slide, the Molina Healthcare Mission? 
I am not. I changed to, I'm showing a Utah Provider Network Service area. Are you guys not seeing that? Um, I, I'm seeing the Molina Healthcare Mission slide. I don't when know what you next. You have to hit share next tab. Oh, tab. so my apologies. I'm not getting, I'm just seeing my slideshow. It won't, I don't see. Let now we see, see back here. Now, <laughs> now we see your slide. <laughs> okay, maybe I can to avoid any don't share your entire screen. You guys, I am so sorry. This is not my um, don't worry. I, I went through the same thing, Jana, because we're used to <laughs> we're not used to the, the Google Meets. Um, I don't know if you want to show the other slide, the number five again, just because we didn't get to see it. Neil, I would absolutely love to. However, I don't know how to get there. <laughs> I'm good. So Let me on, just click on the five and then hit, hit on the slide and then a little thing will pop up and it'll say share this tab instead. Okay. When you, it'll pop up right at the top. Um, it'll say share this one instead. I, it's, I don't know, you have to kind of jump back and forth with the tab. Like share that. Yeah. Uh, there you go. We're seeing page five now. <laughs> I have hit so many things, you guys. Um, I don't know if you're seeing all of this. So you are on slide five now. Yes. Okay, cool. I love that. When, well, that's unfortunate because I really wanted to be on slide six for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you could just do a page down though, and it goes to slide six, right? Page down. Oh, I am slaughtering this whole Google Meet thing. No, it did not go to, if you push page down, it did not go to the next slide. <laughs> can you just click, can you click the slides over there on the left side? You know, I can't get to. Oh, there we go. We're at page six. Okay. Feeling good about that. Okay. Um, so this here is a highlight of our provider network service area highlights. Um, and then you can see that you can see kind of our network and what we're working with. But again, we have a very large network. Um, most of Intermountain, like I said, the hospital systems working on getting more of the PCPs. The best way to look to see if a provider is in our network would be to go to MolinaHealthcare.com. You can click on your line of business. So you would go to Medicaid and then you could enter a provider's name to verify. But if that provider is within the University of Utah, Stewart Healthcare, uh, Mountain Star, all of that is covered by Molina. Um, Again, the biggest concern would be Intermountain Healthcare to look for a specific PCP, but best to do online. So it's not uh, provider specific. They all take the Medicaid then, as long as they're in that network group. What do you mean? So like if there's a doctor, let's say there's five doctors in one group and one of them decides not to contract with the Medicaid, does that happen still with the Medicaid side? Would that happen or if they're as long as they're in the group? So let's say like a University of Utah office. Would we need still need to check that or we can just assume that they do take the Medicaid if they're in that office? You would need to you would need to check to see if a provider takes Medicaid in general. But all of the University of Utah Medicaid providers would also be in Molina's network. OK, does that make sense? But you do have to. Um, you do to become a Medicaid provider, you would have to essentially uh, get credentialed with the state to be a Medicaid provider. And then you would have to also then credential with the health plan uh, to become a provider within their network. So with the University of Utah, for example, um, if they are credentialed to be a University of Utah Medicaid provider, they would also be in Molina's network because we have their entire network in our network. Okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Perfect. Any questions about our network? Any other questions? And then let me know. Can you guys see the next slide? Yeah. 
Medicaid expansion eligibility information. This is just a snapshot of the um, annual income and the, the, the requirements to be eligible for Medicaid. This is from their website specifically, so. Is that gonna be in the stuff that you send us? I assume this is updated for 2023? It is to my knowledge. This was recently pull, pulled from their website, so yes. Um, but again, all the links <coughs> that I send you that will take you to that website, any updates would be on that as well. But this is the most recent that we have received, yes. And this whole slide presentation will be sent to you, as well as the flyer for Take Care Utah which is who we refer to to help people sign up for Medicaid. Um, next here, can you guys see slide eight? Which is, do you have questions about Medicaid? Yes, yeah. we can see it. I have been on to every single one of these links, you guys, and there is so much information. Essentially, it breaks down every single type of Medicaid program they have, who is eligible, um, the different documents, what to expect when applying for Medicaid, what information is going to be needed when applying for Medicaid. It goes over the spend down programs. Um, again, it lists everything. There is so much information. The bottom link here is health, uh, health program representatives. So if somebody has questions about benefits specifically, not enrollment, but benefits, Medicaid benefits in general, it gives you a number to contact uh, one of their HPRs, which is a health program representative. So everything you need to know is going to be in one of these links. Um, when you start looking, allow yourself a couple of hours because there is so much information. A really, really great resource. And this, th these were sent to me by our government contracts team um, that they received from somebody at Medicaid that, that said this should cover everything. So I want to talk about our added services or our value added services, member incentives for our Medicaid members. These are Medicaid specific. <clears throat> Again, with Medicaid, Medicaid pays the same regardless what health plan is covering your benefits, right? Medicaid is Medicaid and benefits are all the same kind of across the board. Um, so we tried to come up with some incentives that kind of set us apart from our competitors. So we have different incentives ranging from, you know, gift cards if you complete your mammogram or diabetes testing, uh, your pap smears, things like that, you can actually qualify to get a gift card, right? Eligible members will be notified uh, by, by mail or text, however they've requested to be contacted, saying if you do this, you can earn a gift card. We also have really great pregnancy programs. So if we are notified that, you know, uh, somebody's going to be having a baby, if they, if they reach out, they can qualify for a free car seat. Or we have these new baskets that they're doing. Um, and the information's listed here. I don't know why I'm pointing like you can see me pointing to my screen. But um, celebration gift box sent to new moms that notify Melina of their pregnancy within the first trimester. Uh, they can receive a farm box that has fresh produce and recipes to promote healthy eating during pregnancy. Uh, the, the postpartum care, they can receive another farm box with produce and recipes. And then the postpartum in-home assessment, um, uh, this is for select members based on social determinants of health. So if somebody's not able to go into the doctor, we can go and have these assessments done in home. Also, we have a free phone program. So anybody on Medicaid, there's a federal program that says you could qualify for a free phone, right? You can get one phone per household. You have to be a Medicaid participant. With our plan, because we are in, what, 21 states across the nation, we have a contract with, gosh, and I don't have the flyer right in front of me. Um, gosh, that's gonna make me crazy. I'm going to find that before this is over. But essentially, we've worked out a deal with our phone provider that our members can get unlimited data, unlimited text, unlimited calling, free international calling. So anyone, like I said, on Medicaid can qualify for a free phone, right? But there's caps on the messaging and there's caps on the data, et cetera. Ours, we offer, you know, the unlimited and the extra and the extra benefits. There is a caveat to this. 
um, with that same federal program, you know, you're given the choice to either qualify for a phone or you can get the internet. If you go for the internet option, then you, then you don't get to qualify for the phone. But a lot of people don't realize that this is a benefit that they can qualify for through the federal program. So for Molina members specifically, they can call, oh gosh, <laughs> let me find the flyer. They can call as a Molina member and, and they'll get the free phone. It's a five, it's a 5G phone, smartphone. Um, and again, with all the extra benefits, I will send that flyer over in the information that I send to you guys as well. It's True Connect. There it is. True Connect is our vendor. So um, that's a great benefit. A lot of people don't take advantage of that benefit. So when we're out and about and meeting with members in the community, it's always fun to be able to say, hey, there's some things that you're not taking advantage of and that you can qualify for. So um, any questions so far? Can you guys see the next slide that says, why choose Melina? We can. I love that. So we have been in business for over 40 years, caring for the underserved population. In Utah, I think we've been here 25 or 26 years. Uh, so lots of experience. Um, our expansive hospital and provider network, that is probably the largest thing that sets us apart from the other providers. We also have the quality member incentives and value-added services. Uh, very rich supplement benefits for the DSNP and the HMO plans. We have, we offer a 24 seven nurse advice line and something that we didn't talk about was teledoc services. So our Medicaid members get free teledoc services. This is 24 hours a day. There is no copay. If you are a member, you can call and get those services whenever needed for free. And then we also have an exceptional care management team. Our care management team, uh, anybody can call or email and request a care manager. And, and what that care manager does is essentially helps coordinate all aspects of their care. Also, if that member needed, you know, you know, they don't have food or they need, they need additional resources in the community. We have community connectors that can work with our members as well to help them find the, needs, the, the needed resources. So anywhere from housing to, you know, getting your car fixed or, or, or things, those social determinants of health that people run into, we have a team of people that can help them kind of manage that and get through those, those areas. Moving right along. Another, another thing that my team does is we get to be stewards of our Molina Cares Accord dollars. And so in 2020, Molina Healthcare started a charitable foundation. And so, you know, in years past, we did a lot of sponsoring and donating through the health plan. So now instead of going through the health plan, we actually have a foundation. And each state is allotted, you know, a certain amount of money each, each year. And we get to be those stewards and find community partners to, um, you know, give back. This is our give back. Last year, I think we donated over $100,000. We did coats for the homeless. We did coats, coats and shoes for kids in schools. We donated to the Granite Education Foundation where we were able to provide, you know, I think we did a $20,000 grant for take home meals for kids that, you know, face either, well, that don't have food and and after school they could go and get meals to take home for dinner and have meal packs for the weekends and so that's a that's the fun side of our job um, is really getting to find those community partners and and give back um and that's technically the end of the slide but i'm happy to answer any questions or if you guys want to talk about anything else specifically medicaid like I said, this, this slide presentation is typically for our community partners that we work with. That's a big focus of ours. But questions, comments, or concerns? Can I, can I just ask you to um, go into your imagination? And I wish I were better at this, and maybe I can get Colette or Neil or even Nancy Kuhn to, to make suggestions here. But what do you think the questions would be that people are asking are um, Medicare dual eligible agents about Medicaid. Um, 
and that our agents are feeling like they don't know the answers to. What, what do you think are those questions and what would the answers be to those questions? Uh, I can imagine they would have a lot of questions. Um, how much money, you know, what's, what's the income? Um, and all of those questions, I would say, the links that I gave you, if you pull those up, it goes literally into and breaks down each type of the different programs. I think that's going to be your first step is to have that information. Um, my second thing would be to connect them with somebody who specifically does enrollment for Medicaid. But I mean, I'm happy to pull up some of the links and show you kind of what I was talking about because every one of your questions is going to be answered, but there's just so much information that I think it's best that you kind of take a look at those. And if you have any additional questions, we can get you in, in, you know, in contact or answer those questions, contact somebody at the state and get them for you. But I believe once you get into those links, it's going to answer most of your questions. Um, well, if it were me, oh, go ahead. I was about to say, so we're going to have the presentation that you've just done. We're going to have this and this recording. Yep. Therefore, we're going to have those links all in one place on our site. So, okay. Okay. Yep. I, and I will send those over. Um, Neil, maybe I'll send that information to you and you can make sure it gets to the group. But again, I'll include the flyer about our phones. I will include the flyer to take care of Utah. Um, who are the navigator and assisters that that enroll people, um, and then all of the links to the Medicaid uh, breakdown of the different programs. That's going to be your best tool. Yeah, I would say the most valuable thing I got out of this is whatever those names are, the people that'll help folks get enrolled in Medicaid. Um, yes. I think uh, a lot of you know I do business Utah, Arizona. Arizona, I can call Medicaid on the phone with a client and in under an hour get a determination. They can do the application on the phone. It's just done. And yeah. in Utah, I have certainly helped people do online applications. I think once I, I uh, you know, suffered through getting online uh, on the phone call with them, but but it is it is just horrendous in Utah. Absolutely horrendous by comparison. So if there is, uh, if there are these agencies that will do that piece for you, I mean, these people that are, are doing it for their agents, I think that's wonderful, but uh, you can leverage your time much better by letting other people do that and then, you know, coordinating or whatever to pass off when it comes time to sell. I do not have time to deal with Medicaid in Utah. I just don't. Right. Yeah, no, I, I actually tried. Yeah, I'm actually not going to share that story because it's, yeah. it's going to make me look silly. But I ran into snags trying to utilize the online portal myself. Um, and I feel like I, I'm, you know, pretty educated on how the process works. But um, yes, take care, Utah. I will send that information over. They are our go-to, um, and they do everything. They'll they'll also look for other benefits within Medicaid or within the Department of Health that they may qualify for. Like I said, SNAP. They can refer them on to you know getting help with housing and and all sorts of different things. But they are the go-to. And I will make sure to get that information over to you as well. I have a, a question. Um, for for instance, I, I know Colette mentioned uh, getting that third party uh, permission to be able to, to look uh, the, at their file and all of that. Um, does that allow you to get an award letter for that member as well? Yeah, you can download, um, like it downloads everything in it. Like I downloaded this morning, exactly the verifications he needs. Mm -hmm. Like I'm just getting ready to go meet him. But um, basically it says that they need like the social security income. It asks that it has a form that he needs to check off all the income for November, December, and January. So I'm grabbing the bank statements and we're just going to scan and upload to his case at his house. You know, and then which I have the iPad to do it. That's kind of how I'm doing that one. Mm -hmm. And then um, a third party in insurance information, they want to know if he's got any other insurance for the past six months, pretty much. So all the forms are here, which is great because I can download it and it says if the case is in a pending status, 
And as soon as it goes approved, you know, it has the case number and everything in there, which is nice. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that sounds really good. So in, in order for you to get that, you did this online, is my understanding correct? Yep, and he had to fill out a form online and sign it with me right there that I can have access to this. Okay, so that that's a, a really good piece of information there. Um, so as you all know, we have the two DSNIP plans. There's the, the full and the partial. So if someone has regular Medicaid, the, the um, full uh, el eligibility, they, they get verified pretty seamlessly. There, there's hardly ever any issues. Now, when it comes to the partial, for some reason, and this is something that we're working on is getting to, so, sometimes when someone has a partial uh, uh, eligibility, it, do, it doesn't show on our end. Um, so getting that award letter, that's why I was asking about the award letter, is crucial when you're submitting your application um, or, 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 or at least have the, um, uh, the forethought that you might be asked for that award letter um, in case that application gets denied or gets put on hold uh, pending Medicaid um, uh, uh, verification. So that that award letter becomes crucial. If you can, you can upload it when you submit the application. That kind of takes care of that problem. But that's something that we've been running into um, that we're trying to find a solution to connect and and verify those partials. But that third party um, uh, permission would take care of that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's also a system called Marks that I use. That I have you heard of Marks, where you can verify the LIS level. That's on the CMS Enterprise Portal. So I do check that because we did do the extra help application. So as soon as I've been logging into that and checking, because we did do that. So as soon as I'll know before he does. Mm -hmm. You know, I usually when you check that system at least weekly, it'll populate the the extra yeah. help when it goes into effect in the level. So that kind of gives me an idea of what kind of level they are in there. Mm -hmm. And then you're, you know, that's when you need to do the decent verification. Yeah, that's a really good point too. And, and yes, I, I'm familiar. And I think our broker services uses the, ma the marks uh, uh, system as well. That's great, and that's good because that's where they're probably getting the information for the decent verifications. So, if you ever have an enrollment um, that you're trying to put through and you're not sure, you can call our broker services team, and then and you can give them the information, and they'll check for you. For those that don't have marks, or we can just uh, get the the award letter like you're talking, and we can mm -hmm. upload that the application and submit it with it if it's still too early mm -hmm. okay yeah. all right that's good okay well thank you everybody thank you very much jana for uh presenting thanks colette and nancy for contributing and neil as always thank you very much for your contributions and for arranging this for us um before we go i'd like to just remind everybody uh stonehill has a website that's called medicareplandetails.com and what we try to do is we try to put all the carrier resources that we think that you're going to meet to need including recordings of the pinnacle meetings and everything and they've been talking about sending us resources like this um what was it true true calling true i can't remember jenna what it was called it true connect True Connect, True Connect. Uh, when we get those things, we're going to put it out here on this place called Medicare Plan Details. Right now, it uh, it does have a password. Uh, the password is very easy. It doesn't change uh, except once a year. It's called MA2023, lowercase MA2023. We do put this stuff behind uh, a password so that only agents can get into it because when the carriers come out with the new plans and the new information, uh, beneficiaries can't see it until 20, you know, until October 1st. 
Um, so there is a password, it's always there, but it doesn't change. You can get in there and you'll be able to see all this stuff from Molina as well as other carriers if you're interested. We have PDFs of enrollment kits and brochures and everything so that you don't have to navigate all the carrier websites and understand all the ins and outs of all the carrier websites. Anyway, that's uh, that's all we have today. And we're going to stick around in case anybody does have questions. But thank you very much. And we'll see you next time.